Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. I'm Will Schick, Director of Product Development for Atomic Mass Games. Very excited to be here with you all today. I hope that you all had an amazing weekend. I hope that everything's been going really well wherever you are in the world. Uh, and I hope that you're excited for what we have on tap today, because I certainly am. We have the one, the only, the new Captain America, Sam Wilson, uh, coming very soon to Marvel Crisis Protocol. Today, we're going to put some paint on this amazing sculpt. Uh, this is one of my all-time favorites that we've done. I just think the way in which Dallas and the team, we figured out how to capture the flight uh, on the base, as we've talked about a lot. There's a lot of really complicated like questions and things you have to solve when working on any kind of miniature, but especially when you want to put it in motion and put it in dynamic stuff, um, you have to think about, well, how does it attach to the base? Because we can't just make it float in the air. Unfortunately, we don't have the technology for that yet. We keep working on it. Maybe one day we'll get there. Um, but yeah, I just I love this. I love the sculpt. I love this miniature. I think it just really captures Sam Wilson. It's so dynamic. Uh, so it is one of my favorites, and that of course is completely personal preference. But I get to have it. Let's go ahead and move on and take a look at this fella, and just see how things are going here. All right. So you can see that we have our John Walker. John Walker. John Walker. See. Love Vespertine. You totally like fooled me because I saw your comment and then I was like, John Walker. That's not what I meant at all. Uh, so here is Sam Wilson, the one and only, all new, all different Captain America. Uh, today, I kind of figured that it would be fun to do, uh, you know, I thought about maybe doing it in the classic colors and just doing kind of the traditional color scheme. I think we could do that. Uh, we could also potentially think about doing kind of an alternate color scheme that's more based off of the classic Falcon um, colors and do something a little darker with the reds and kind of the green grays. Um, I'm not really sure which way I want to go yet. I do know that the wings are going to be red, so we're going to start there. He's pretty stable. Like the, there's a little bit like if you push, you push over here, obviously, but you know, if you just tap him here, there's a very good connection point right here from the wing into the explosion. Um, so he's really well balanced. So I'm gonna start with the reds, uh, just while we kind of figure stuff out. So I'm gonna be using this Model Air Red, which I really like to use for my base cuts of the reds. It's especially great over the Zenith Prime that we like to use here. Um, it has really good coverage. It kind of works in a high contrast value type of way. So we're just gonna grab a little bit of that, maybe do a drop of water just to get it a little more fluid. Um, and we're just going to start on the wings. So we're just going to kind of like mush this out. And again, we're looking for something that will use some of that Zenith Prime and that contrast underneath. So it is a bit more like a wash than anything else. And we're just going to start knocking that out. Let's see our camera's picking up a lot of blue from our light. So maybe we'll go in and adjust that because that's not quite as orangey in person as it's looking on the camera. So let me just really quick go in, do a little bit of a color. There we go. <sighs> Blam. Oh, look at that. Okay. Now we're cooking with grease. Let's kind of knock that in. And this is just going to be, again, really quick, really simple. We're just going to wash this red over the zenith. And then if anybody in the chat has strong opinions on whether we should do classic Captain America colors or we should do something a little different, feel free to speak up. You can be the deciding voice here. So, put that in, come in down here, knock that around. Really quick, really easy. And again, I really like this Vallejo Model Air Red. We've played with a lot of the other airbrush paints from the line. This is the red is kind of the only one that we found so far that really works this way. What it works is this great right out of the bottle kind of red wash. I love how punchy it is. It's got a lot of vibrancy to it. Um, again, it plays really, really well with the Zenith colors. So it shades pretty well on the dark grays. Does everything else going on here. So. just makes painting red, which can be a tricky color just due to 
especially primary reds, kind of difficulty in covering certain colors, especially for black. Doing the Zenith Prime will definitely help with that um, because you're going to start with a lighter color, but it does cover really, really well. And so it just makes kind of getting that initial base cut of red down really, really quick, really, really simple. If you make a little mistake, you can just kind of scrub it off. Okay, let's think here. All right, let's see. So we know that we're going to do the center still the same. So we'll come in, we'll knock in this red here. And we have two whole days to paint this fella. So we're going to be doing him today. And then we're going to be working on him next week as well. So that's really exciting and awesome. He certainly deserves it. And there's a lot of uh, really great detail on this mini. So having that extra time is only going to give us more opportunities to really dive in and make him look amazing. Plus, we got a little bit of white to paint either way. So no matter what, we got to be prepared for that. Let's come back here. Let's think about. So we'll get this center portion red like that Get this stripe here red that'll be pretty good all right so we've got that knocked in uh, we'll do the boots red for sure because you know either captain america or some variation of the sam wilson kind of colors it's going to have red boots We'll kick those in really quick. That red. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. And that everyone enjoyed their time. Is everything going on? I've seen some communities getting to open back up and get back to playing games and stuff. That's very exciting to watch. I'm looking forward to this Thursday. Dallas and I will finally be getting our game in from our May roster challenge. So we're going to square off with the forces that we created along with you all in the chat and paint it over the month of May. Uh, so we're going to see the Revengers of the Galaxy, which is the team that I put together converted, painted, all that stuff. The stories that we began telling. I'm going to be putting those on the table. I don't know if Dallas has named his uh, sinister evil force yet, but whatever they're called, the bad bros, um, we're going to be squaring off against them. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of emotional impact when we find, when my team finds out that Star-Lord actually betrayed them. And he was the reason for all of the calamity. So like any good comic book story arc, we do have a twist betrayal. I did miss a bit under the wing, it's true. No one's ever really going to see that, but I'll fix it for you because you all saw it. There we go. And it looks like we can come back over here. This isn't going to be the only pass of red that we'll do. So if we do wind up missing stuff, we can get it on the highlighting and stuff too. But thank you for pointing that out. Oh, we've got my back chat. Let me know. The skulls with no name? Oh, that, that does work. I mean, it could be the skulls with no name here. Okay, what else do we need to do red? Um, that boot. Let's go ahead and let's think for a second here. I'm going to go ahead and I think, yeah, basically Infinity War. All right. Um, all right. I think we're going to grab what color do we want here? I'm going to grab not hold your blue. That's definitely not the color I want. I need to find a, if we're going to do maybe this and all right, why not? So I'm going to take some negro gray and some merim green, and I'm going to mix it together to make a green gray. 
And then we're going to dive in and we're just going to go with something a little less traditional for our Falcon, which I think will be fun. Because, well, a little less traditional for our Captain America, Sam Wilson, and a little more Falcon inspired. Uh, maybe it's like his version of the Captain America stealth suit, you know. But I think doing something a little, little fun and different just to make this character our own. Be really neat. All right, let's see. So we're just going to mix up that color. And then... Okay, so I'm just going to mix up those two colors. I'm using approximately... Yeah, a little more dark in there. A little more dark. Um, I might add a little drop of black just to deepen it up. So I'm using about a 50-50 here with a drop of black just to get it nice and deep. But I'm really looking for like a green, a nice green gray. We'll try this. Uh, with that slight green undertone. Okay, here we go. So let's just knock this in and we can deepen this up as we go. Try to avoid the knee pad because I think we might come back and make that red. So we can just kind of avoid that. That would be nice. And then we can come in and we'll hit those upper areas on the suit, which would normally be white. We'll do those red. So we'll kind of just do this red, red, deep gray kind of color. A bit like his covert op suit or something. I think it'll look pretty cool. And definitely have a little bit of those classic, well, I say classic, but what I really mean is like classic modern Falcon vibes. Because true classic Falcon, he'd be in, he'd be in a lot of white. And we're not, I don't think that's what we want to replicate here. So we're looking more at the 2010 10 on, maybe even the modern interpretation of Falcon, I think. Uh, definitely where the MCU costume got a little bit inspired from too. But I think this will just be a fun way to play and do something a little different. Certainly make our Captain America stand out. And like I said, we can always say that this is kind of like his more covert op suit that he wears. I just want to try to use my finger a little bit to wipe off those areas. I'm going to do my best to be very careful around the raised areas that I want to be red. because it's going to be a lot easier to do the red over the top of the gray or the Zenith Prime than it will be to do it any other way. So, I might switch brushes here a little bit too. Just lock that in. All right, so we'll come in there, come here. Yeah, and I picked the green, I mean, obviously, um, the green, the green gray color that we mixed up is partially just to replicate the colors that we see in the suit, but they also have that nice contrastiness between the red and the green, so they're going to play well together. Because as we all know from certain holidays, red and green are nice, strong, contrasting, complementary colors. And so having that green undertone in the gray. 100% helps tie everything together and make it look really nice and cohesive. We're just going to do our best, although I might have been inspired a little bit by the John Walker discussion, by the tomfoolery that happened earlier when I got caught. Um, I'm going to try to avoid the John Walker comparison. That would have been more of a black. Definitely a lot darker. I think, I think we'll do the cowl, like the part across the head. 
we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that red, I think. Um, so basically, whatever would have been white in a traditional costume, we will do red. We have to star white, I think, though, for sure. And come back through and mess with that later. Just want to make sure that I get all of my areas here. Take that over. Make it up some of these. Shadows add a little more of our wash. Get in there like that. There we go. Okay. Looks like oh, get the interior of that leg. There we go. And come around here. A little bit more of the wash. Let's cover that red sploosh over. Okay, I think so. Maybe right here. Try not to get it on our red wings. That's the trick. If you're really concerned about paint spillover, you don't want to do a lot of correction. You can always leave the wings off, and then that'll give you better access to the back of the arms. You could leave the shield off too, but no one's ever going to see the underarms, so I always leave the shield on. Uh, looks like looks like we're pretty good. I don't see. Red spill, great. Okay, I think we got everything we want to be that color. So that's good. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go back to the red really quick. Uh, so back to the red, I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to our thing. Kind of careful on the face here. Spread that out a bit more. Come up the back of the head. Here, it has that like half face cowl on. Get that to be nice red. Oh, half the face. I don't feel like that would be a very comfortable cowl to wear, but you know. Superheroes seem to rock it all the time, so must not be that bad to have half your face covered in cowl. All right, so we'll knock that out. We're going to be thrown down on Thursday at 1 p.m. Maddest Max 1, 2, 3. So this Thursday, 1 p.m., we're going to be thrown down with our rosters that we did for the roster challenge. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to be using and then for some extra special because our stories and rosters kind of evolved their own timeline and all that stuff. That's true. Windburn on the cheeks. That's why I just grow the beard. Um, but we're going to be doing. Uh, we are going to be doing um, the words I'm looking for. We're going to be using the special. Crisis cards from the Infinity War OP kit. Thought those would be kind of a fun inclusion because we are talking about some alternate universe timeline stuff and we made up kind of our own stories around it. So, especially because of the focus on the Infinity Gems and Star Lord having the Power Gem and we got a Thanos in there. It seemed only right that we use those Crisis cards to kind of help tell the story even more. And uh, I really like those crises, actually. Like, a couple of them are still my favorite crises we've done for Crisis Protocol in terms of just their fun factor and the weirdness. Like, I love the Mind Stone one. 
and the fact that you can take control of other characters if you control the mind throne. And, um, but so we're gonna have some fun with that. I think that'll be a really cool way again to tie everything together since we had so much uh, so much ridiculous enjoyment out of telling each other stories and how those things, along with the choices that Chet helped us make for the rosters as they expanded from five characters to nine characters, they just affected so much. And so, Seemed like that was definitely something that we should do and would be fun and all that good stuff. So that's the plan. I don't know which we'll, we'll draw the crisis as randomly, of course, uh, like you do. So we'll see which two infinity stones slash gems uh, are in play when we do our crisis selection for the game have all that set up and then we will battle it will be a great little time the only thing i'm seeing here that i want to fix is normally this part would be blue to white so we're just gonna come in i think i did the cow a little too so we'll just kind of do that for the moment. Bring that up around the neck. And we'll mess around with that later. Just give that more separation and make it look nice. Good. And then maybe we'll come back through here. Just erase that so we get that red around the star, because I think we do want it around the star. So something like that. There we go. There. I think that's coming together pretty nice. He looks, he definitely looks like he's ready for a fight. That white there, so we'll play with the white. We have the red on the cowl. The windbreaker is looking really nice. So let's go ahead and we're going to mix up a quick wash for the red, and that's going to be a mixture of blue ink. Maybe there we go. So it's going to be this blue ink, and we're going to mix in some red ink. And my goal here is to just kind of make like a nice crimson. So a little bit on the purple side. Blue is so good at shading down. I wouldn't miss the wingtip poking through. Oh my gosh, good catch. Let's get that wingtip. It also looks like we missed some of the wings down here. So we'll just hit that. This is why it's so good to have people watching your work. They'll catch all your little mistakes. I'd have had to come back and fix that later. Maybe next week. We went like, oopsies. There. All right, so again, we're gonna mix up that red, that blue. We're looking for kind of a pretty deep crimson color for the shade. Blue obviously will shade red gloriously. Um, and we're just gonna apply this all over as a wash. And if we think it's a little too thick in spots, we'll go back and we can wipe some of it away. We do have working time, so I want, well, I do want it to tint kind of like everything here. I don't necessarily want it to pool on the big flats of the wing. So if I notice like down here at the tip, it's getting a little too pooly, I'll take that away. Come back over here, knock out this one. Take that. A little deep in the shadows, so that's all right. Do that, Get that going. Get 
that out. Now on the interior of the wings, I can be a little heavier with the wash because obviously that part would be in more shadow, but I still want to avoid pooling. So the biggest trick when working with washes, uh, whether you mix them yourself or they're pre-made or anything like that, is you do want to, like, you, you don't have to be afraid about slopping them on a little bit, um, but you do want to make sure that you're working them across evenly the whole surface. Because if you don't and you let them pool, those really thick, goopy pools not only don't look very nice, but they're really hard to paint back over. So it can be it can be really challenging to fix um, because they're so strong and they just they're it's really hard for most of the transparency of every paint. You know, no no paint is truly opaque. Um, they have varying levels of it, but it's really hard to beat that really thick, oily kind of puddle. So you don't want to let that dry. You want to be really careful about that. And it's nice that it is very easy to correct if you wind up in that situation because you have such a long working time with ink. Uh, inks and washes, I mean, anything that's really thin. You just have to take either the brush you're working with and push the wash around because you get a lot of time to push it around and put it where you want it to go. Or you can grab a slightly damp, clean brush and then you just go in and wick it away. And the natural cohesion and adhesion properties of liquid and water will mean that your slightly damp brush will just pull all the wash right off or most of the wash right off the, the surface area. Um, so it's a really nice way to very quickly and effectively, like right here on the tip, you can see hopefully right here on the tip how we have this really gnarly pool going on because all the wash wants to go that way. Um, so I'm just going to grab my little damp brush and I'm just going to tease it out and pull some of that away so we don't get a really thick, gross pool. It's kind of the same down here, although nobody will really see that. I can still come in. And play around with it. You do have to be careful about how dry the wash is when you do that though, because if it's too dry, you'll just pull, you'll leave a big bathtub ring. And so you have to, you have to kind of play the game of, can I change it? Like work on the areas, make sure everything's come back, watch it as you continue to move on. But then no, if it's too dry, you're just going to have to go in and you're going to have to fix it because as hard as it can be to fix some of those really gross pools, um, if they pull up too much, it is equally as hard, if not more difficult, to fix a bathtub ring um, when you pull all the color away. So, as we've talked about before, and uh, we like to, I like to echo from Mr. One, Mr. Bob Ross. There are no mistakes, just happy little accidents. And that's true, even if you make a mistake, quote unquote, you can go back in and you can make it work to your advantage. You can make it part of the interesting, like, co coherency of the piece. Um, but as one Dallas Kemp likes to say, painting is also the fine art of correcting one's mistakes. And I think those two go hand in hand in terms of their philosophy. So what it means is, is that even if you slop something somewhere and it's not supposed to be like that, you can utilize those mistakes to add visual interest and to make the piece like more artistic. If you look at really good art, most of it's not perfect. It's just utilizing variances in contrast and color and tone and all that stuff to create something that's visually interesting. So you can mess around with all kinds of stuff and make it look very cool and very different and pretty exciting. Okay. I don't think I want those knee pads. I think we're going to do the knee pads in white. Probably. We can wait a little bit on that. Um, so we got our reds down. So I think we're done with our red wash for right now. I'm going to save that shield until later. I'm going to go back to my 
gray, which is thankfully still a little wet since we thinned it out. See that I missed a little spot right here. So we're just gonna come under and hit this area a little bit more in between these. Same thing here. Here where the star is. Give that some definition. Okay. So this is coming along swimmingly well. Uh, we're going to do more to all of these areas to kind of like enhance them and, and make everything pop more. But honestly, if we can get this Captain America to a tabletop standard within the hour, if we've got 30 minutes left to do, I think we might be able to accomplish it. Uh, that'll be great. Be a really great way to start. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to do the metals really quick. I'm going to grab black metal. Um, from scale 75 and uh, da, 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 where'd my black metal go? There it is. Um, so I'm going to base coat all of the metallic areas in black metal. Wow. I think having a nice rich metallic will will work best for this. Um, so I think we're gonna do the knee pads in that color too. So we'll come in. If I was doing the classic Captain America colors, I'd be looking at a much lighter white steel for this. But we're doing this more stealth version of Captain America. Now the pouches on his belt, especially the art, look more metallic. And I think even Brendan painted them more like their metal utility boxes. So we'll just go ahead and do that right now too. Just to make things a little simpler. Knock that in, get that going. Ugh. Let's see, this one over here. So one of the things that I really am excited about for Captain America Sam Wilson is I really like his leadership, not only because it provides a very distinct option from Captain America's, but also because of its utility for different team constructions. Um, as many folks in the community have already pointed out, Ant-Man and Wasp, uh, really like it, especially when you run them together. More mobility for those characters is never a bad thing. And then, of course, um, there are other characters that you can, like, splash into the Avengers that get a lot out of it. It's one of those ones where it's a very powerful ability, so it doesn't trigger every time. But when it does trigger, it can be really dramatic. We had several playtest games where somebody would have lost a point after having one of their characters dazed, but instead another Avenger was able to step up, heal, drop a condition, all that stuff, and then use the short advance to get back into contest range or set themselves up for their own activation to retaliate. Captain America himself, uh, you know, he's got the airlift ability, which turned out to be clutch a lot. He's extremely mobile, and you can't discount charge plus a little shield throw, uh, especially when you pull off some ricochets, but he's very consistent. Like One of the things I like about Sam here is his consistency in terms of generating power and then being able to use his abilities. And, of course, um, one of the big things like we talked about when we were discussing Sin and stuff is that we want to make sure that neither... Like that both leaders or any leadership offers options, but that you're not simply taking only the, lead, the character for the leadership. And I think, you know, if you want to run the Avengers with all the Captain Americas currently, uh, Sam Wilson and Steve Rogers make a great team. And more often than not, if you're running 
Captain America from the core box, the Steve Rogers version, I would say you're oftentimes going to be picking his leadership. Um, but one of the really cool things about when you select that leadership is it's after everybody's deployed, you know, you get to select your leadership. So depending on all of the variables that you don't get to know until everything's set up, that's when you can pick the leadership that you think is going to be the best uh, for the game. And that tactical flexibility and the ability to adjust on the fly can be so important um, and have such a huge impact that it shouldn't be discounted for sure. It's going to hit the underside of the shield, which would be mostly in shadow anyway with this black metal. Again, this is one of those things where like nobody's going to see the bottom of the shield, so you don't necessarily have to paint it. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit it with this black metal and then I'm not even going to touch it again. So, because there's just no reason to. But I like I like getting at least the base coat of the black metal on just in case somebody might take a look at it from a different vantage point. Uh, it depends. I mean, I think crisis construction really depends on who you're taking with Sam. Um, he does really well because he typically wants a wider team. Um, I think we saw a lot of success. I'm going to use some thrash metal for the shield really quick. Um, you know, testers and stuff. We saw a lot of success with the, uh, the larger amount of extracts because you're typically running a number of characters. So um, you have things like uh, the struggle for the cube, so getting cosmic cube fragments are pretty good um, because you have more characters, especially once you start factoring in characters like Miles Morales and others who might be able to splash in and help steal some objectives. And then, of course, you get the cheeky benefit uh, of airlift, which allows you to maybe threaten or pick stuff up quicker. And Sam himself is a really fast mover, so you can splash in Sam and of course, that Black Widow. Um, you see some some success there. So he likes he likes things that are where he can maximize his team's value in terms of the numbers. I've seen. Uh, I think we saw a couple of lists that really use Sam as a bit of a linchpin, and then focused on a bigger hitter like Hulk. Um, and then the idea was, is you used all of your like two point, three point characters like Ant-Man and Wasp and their mobility. And then every time one of them got dazed, you know, you could use it to basically get Hulk into better position to do a little bit of condition removal or healing. Um, I think Thanos, if you wanted to splash in Thanos instead of a Hulk, because you're not going to have a problem making that minor affiliation, that stuff can work really well. So he plays really well to like a big bruiser. <laughs> That makes him, uh, you know, somewhat effective on things like Gamma Shelters um, or Demons Downtown. I think there's a, there's a lot of ways to get a lot out of um, Sam. And again, a lot of it's just going to come down to your team. The, the biggest thing to remember is that he brings a lot of mobility and movement through the leadership and then just through his own suite of abilities. And so kind of planning around that, uh, as opposed to Captain America, who kind of just Steve Rogers, who just lets everybody do what they do really well with the power discount. Um, you can take characters that don't necessarily need to focus as much on spending their own power for reactive abilities or active abilities. Um, and then you can utilize all the stuff that Sam brings to his kit to help make that stuff work. But oftentimes, um, you know, he he allows you to either focus up on a big character and support them with some smaller characters because he's he's that three threat, which is a really great threat value for the leader. Or you can just play really wide with him and get the most out of leadership because every time one of your characters gets dazed, um, you're going to gain that benefit. 
Okay, so for the shield, I'm now going to shift over and I'm going to uh, grab some more of our model air red. This time I'm going to thin it out quite a bit more. Um, so as where before I was kind of dropping in like one drop of paint. Now I'm going to do, or one drop of water. Now I'm going to do like two to three because uh, I want this to have a pretty good transparency. You could even add in a little red ink to it if you wanted to. Uh, and we're just going to start going. So I'll bring this around. My goal here is to really have the silver underneath show through. Um, I've seen a lot of really amazing videos on YouTube of people doing like non-metallic tricks to make the shield look really cool. I, well, I think that's really neat. <laughs> um, I find this method to be a lot quicker and just easier for my brain because um, you worry a little bit less about where you're placing highlights. There's a lot less finagling of the dark to light to create the non-metallic metal effect. And so, you know, it's all, it's all up to you. It's, it depends on what you want to do because we're, we've only got two hours for this Sam Wilson. And especially because for this first hour of painting, I kind of want to do my best to get him to a tabletop standard. Um, we might be able to do that still. There's a lot going on in this guy. I'm just kind of doing what I would do really quick to make some really nice looking effects. I'm going to grab some cyan and a little bit of this amaranth blue, and I'm going to mix those two together to create a wash of blue for the inside. And honestly, there's a lot that I would do to the silvers to make them look more white, um, mostly by mixing silver with probably one of my favorite colors from the scale range in terms of blue whites, um, which is Arctic blue. And I would create a semi-metallic. And all that really means is like a semi-metallic has properties of metallic paint because you've mixed it with metallic, but it's not nearly as shiny, it's far more dull. And that's kind of what we're doing here with these washes is we're creating a semi-metallic um, finish because we're putting these transparent bl blue and red layers over the metallic, which is dulling the metallic. But we're still getting that kind of natural sheen and vibrancy of the metallic. So there's a very quick way to just approach the shield uh, and we could call this done at this point and be quite happy with it, I think. Um, we'll come back next week and of course we will update it and do some more stuff to it. I'll show you some of that semi-metallic, but we have about 20 minutes left and we got a few more things to do to get this, uh, Captain America table ready. Um, I need to go back to my thrash metal. So again, we're going to do, um, we'll just do the star instead of doing the star, like pure white. We'll go ahead and do the star like we will do on the shield. So, oop, this is where my head gets in the shot normally because I would have to get in a little closer, but that's okay. Just erase our metallic spill over here. The strength of having that secondary brush. Kind of adjust, wipe away any of the excess, erase it out. So, with that star on there, um, again, we might just grab the really, really white just to make it punchy. Uh, we'll go up to the heavy metal and we'll just do a really quick. Maybe. There we go. You gotta come out of the bottle. Do it really quick. Now, one of the things I don't think has been shown off too much for Sam has been a couple of his team tactic cards. Um, and he has one that is truly impressive. 
which is Bird of Prey. And I won't give away the complete effect, but it certainly turns him into an absolute monster uh, when he's dealing with other characters with flight. And it is one of my favorite cards. It definitely is one of those like playstyle defining cards. Um, like we talk about with certain characters where it's like, okay, you know, Venom has Lethal Protector and uh, Mysterio has his Grand Illusion or the Grand Illusion card. For Sam, uh, Bird of Prey is definitely a little less like auto include, but I think if you're going to take Sam, it's certainly strongly worth considering because there's a lot of characters of flight. There's a lot of really strong characters of flight. And uh, Bird of Prey with Sam pretty much says, you know, that character with flight is in trouble. So it's definitely a very cool thematic card and gives him some superior punch when it comes to dealing with that stuff. I'm going to grab a little bit of black. And now just a little bit, we're going to hit the belt. Boop. I think the only thing we might miss out on here. So I'm just going to come in. So what we could do is we can definitely kind of rely for the white striping on the suit. We can kind of just let our Zenith Prime fill in for the white. I think that would be perfectly okay for a tabletop standard. We've put a lot of work in on Sam otherwise. Let's separate those out. Over here, separate those out. The, uh, I think the other really talking, going back to kind of like where does Sam excel and stuff like that. I think he plays exceptionally well with War Machines uh, too. Um, not just because, again, Sam kind of wants to run that really wide team, but War Machines has such a strong... Let's see, we got a little silver spillover on this wing. We can fix that later, though. Um, War Machine just is such a durable character. And then, of course, he's got uh, quite the offensive punch for his kit that he kind of works as a good balance to the more nimble, faster, but slightly more fragile characters like Ant-Man or Wasp that Sam typically also wants to run with. All right, so we got the belt knocked out. Um, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna really quickly use this same, actually, I'm gonna grab some umber. I'm gonna do the hair. Sam kind of has a really deep brown hair color. If I can find my umber, where did it go? There we go. So I'll knock this open. And get the hair really quick. And then after we do this umber, we can come back through with our black wash and just dull, thin it down or dull it down back to a black, and then we'll have that nice umber undertone. And we'll make that hair look nice and rich. You don't want to do just flat black, like hair, even black hair, unless it's been dyed like pure black has undertones to it, you know. It's always it's always really a dark brown. Or maybe there's a little orange in it or some red or something, but having that undertone for that wash to play off of and work with is always really nice. Okay. That's that. I'm going to grab <laughs> I'm going to grab some chestnut. And a little bit of, uh, what's that color called? Uh, I'm going to grab a little bit of hash or purple and a little bit of chestnut. I'm going to mix up a nice red-brown. And we're going to start that for the skin. <laughs> and we're just going to kind of play 
with these colors. Okay. I'm going to get that flesh tone on there. And let's see. Color. And again, I've kind of let this be thinned out a little bit so that I'm letting the Zenith Prime help me with the highlights. Uh, when we come back next week, we'll of course be diving into more details and adding shades and all kinds of good stuff to it. But you're just going for that nice tabletop ready to play standard doing these kind of like pin washes and stuff over the Zenith. We'll get you 80% of the way to where I think you want to be. And then of course you can go back in and you can add the details or the cleanup. Dark lining would be a huge one on this guy. Um, just to separate out all the different areas and stuff. And so we'll do that next week as well. I'm just going to kind of let that transparency work by building up a couple of layers where I think I want more of the shade. Get back on to that. And then, all right, let's see here. And then we just have to do the goggles really quick. So we'll grab, uh, just because it's out, we'll grab this thrash metal. So same thing we did for the stars and stuff. And we'll do these goggles really quick. in, lock those in, and they kind of go across the side of the head here, it's attached to the cowl and stuff, Just do that, and I think what we want to do here is just Go in and get a little color on those on those actual lenses. And I'll do this because I think that this turns out really nice. So grab a little bit of Tiamat orange. Ooh, there it is. And then. I'm just going to come in and dot the lens trying to not hit the outside frames. And they're really nicely defined, so the sculptures did a great job of getting super deep detail in there. So we're also trying to avoid getting that color into the insets basically the space between the frame and the lens. I did less good on that side, but that's okay. We can come back through and clean that up. Again, just fix your mistakes, fix your mistakes. all of that out. Fantastic. Okay. And now I'm going to grab my red ink. And I'm just going to do a really quick glaze over the top of that orange. It should give me a really nice
sharp quarry lens. So I'll have to go back and fix that. I spilled over a little bit. Well, that's an easy. So we got a little bit over here. Paint application wasn't perfect, but we can fix that. This side though worked out perfect. So you can definitely see how the effect will look. And if you do go over, you just kind of have to go back through with your brush and adjust the rims around it. But overall, we're pretty close to fixed. Okay, we got four minutes left. Boom. So this is our one hour tabletop standard on this fella. You can see we did a really good job, I think, overall of getting this Captain America painted up. All the colors on, we have nice separation. We have a fun different color scheme with him. Uh, definitely has that green gray inspired Falcon look. So what we're gonna do next week is we're gonna dive back in and we're gonna take this mini to the next level. So we're gonna do some highlights, we're gonna do some dark lining. We're gonna push some of the effects. We're gonna work on that shield to make it pop even more. Uh, and if we have time, we'll dive into the explosion and kind of how we would approach that as well. So let's flip over to this one really quick. Wow. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had fun. I hope you're as excited as I am uh, to get to see Captain America Sam Wilson on the tables, get added to all the Avengers rosters, and start doing the thing that he does, uh, which is all very cool. Be sure to join John Schaefer tomorrow, uh, as I think he has some gameplay stuff in store uh, for the stream. And then, of course, on Thursday, Dallas and I will be kicking things off from our May roster challenge, plenty of game of Marvel Crisis Protocol with the rosters that we built, along with you all in the chat. Uh, over the course of the thing, we're going to be using the Infinity War Special Crisis cards from that event. Um, so tune in. It's going to be a blast. I'm sure we're going to have a wild time. And we're going to see how those rosters turned out, how they work, uh, and get to see all of the final tact card choices and everything else that went along with them. And then, of course, on Friday, we'll be back for more gameplay action. This week is just like a week of gameplay. Um, and we're going to be playing. Uh, we also had a uh, challenge for the rest of the staff. So there's going to be more awesome gameplay on Fridays as well. Um, so tune in every day from now on 1 p.m. Pacific, see some awesome stuff. We will see you on the next one until then stay beautiful, be good to each other and take care. Goodbye.